Welcome back, my beloved viewers. Today, we are taking a look into the craziest and possibly the most insane movie of the year, Smile 2. There is no tomorrow! There is no tomorrow! There is no tomorrow! Now the plot, my favorite thing in movies, the story is about one Sky Riley who is about to embark on a new world tour, when she begins to experience increasingly terrifying and unexplicable events. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and pressure of fame, she must face her dark past to regain control of her life before it spirals out of control. Now that's pretty much how the plot goes. If you couldn't tell by the trailers, which, yeah, hey, they ruin a lot of things in this movie. A lot of surprises in this movie were ruined by the trailers, but I'm not here to rant on the trailers, even if they ruined some pretty cool kills, and neither am I going to rant on the movie. Well, not all that much, but before we get to that, let's talk positives. Now I gotta say, you ever hear a saying, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover? This is why. I went into this movie not knowing much besides just the basics and watching the previous movie. I was not overly thrilled to see a pop star as the main character. Pop star as in the actress plays a pop star, not that she is a pop star. Short but pointless. But, however, coming out of the movie, I gotta say, it surprised me. It isn't terrible music, nor does it take up a large amount of runtime. It's actually handled fine. I think it's an interesting take for Small 2. Like, you don't expect to follow a star going through hell, basically, but it works. I was also not expecting like Sky as much as I did. You can definitely tell this character is going through some stuff with her fame, her past, her substance abuse, and oh yeah, the demon following her. I wasn't really expecting much in terms of this movie to do anything for the world of Smile, and for the most part, it doesn't. But there's enough there, enough twists and turns in this movie that makes it wild, and it does make it feel like its own thing, while also having scenes from the first that make it feel similar without being an exact copy. Other notable things are the gore and effects in this movie. Like, the first that comes to mind in the trailers is where the dude smashes his face in with a weight. As somebody who used to work out with weights like that, and basically just cringing when I accidentally crush my fingers with one, it's incredible to see what one of those can do to your face. The suspense is good too. I'm not somebody who gets scared easily, but I thought the jump scares were pretty good and kind of scary. Also, I like how this movie feels like the first one, but doesn't exactly follow the first, except in the beginning, but we won't get into that. Spoiler free, remember? Honestly though, what I would have liked to seen was a continuation of the first, which spoilers for the first, but I would have liked to have seen where Kyle Gowner's character, Joel, has gone, which... Well, actually, no, I think I will talk about it. I mean, after all, it's in the trailers, which I guess does mean we're moving to the negatives now. Now, I would not consider this a spoiler, because neither did the trailer, but here's it anyway. Actually, I'll give you five seconds to turn away right now. Okay, you're gone? Good. Joel dies. Actually, in a very graphic way, too, in the beginning. And that's something I would like to talk about. It's actually one of my biggest negatives. The beginning. I like and dislike it. I like what they were going for. It was kind of cool and mysterious, in a way. And, in my opinion, they should have focused on that. However, on the other hand, why kill an already established character? Like, why show it in the trailer? Like, I'm sitting in the theater, I see the snow, and the same little town, and I see Joel. And I'm like, great. So this guy's the one who gets hit by the car. Man, I'm telling you, I have had it with these trailers lately. Besides the trailers ruining everything, I wish Joel was actually in the movie a lot longer. I really like Kyle Gowner. I think he's a great actor, and I think he's great in everything he's in. 
it just kind of bugs me. Okay, so moving from the beginning to the middle, it's fine. It's actually really good. But the ending, not so much. It's weird. On the one hand, I was really liking where it was going. And then they pulled a... No bueno. It was kind of a middle finger for the people a little bit. Again, no spoilers. But I wish they hadn't gone and done that. It was kind of cool. But I liked how it was going before. Also, the movie leaves me with a lot more questions. Like, for one, when killing someone, does the curse release you, even if someone witnesses you do it? What happens if you die, and a group of people see it? Do they all get picked off one by one, or is there a Grim Reaper doing some overtime? And does pulling a supernatural by killing yourself work, or no? Because they do that, or at least try to, Sky and a character named Morris. My name is Morris Gross. It's fine. Maybe predictable to some people, surprising to others. In all, it's a fun watch for anyone who enjoyed the first. While maybe not living up to the first film, I still find it just as scary and just as good. Well, that's all of our time. Those were just some of my thoughts. How about you tell me yours? But, till next time, peace. Just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just